There's one operation you're going to do with every video you create, it's rendering it. Whether it's for YouTube, social networks, or some other platforms, every time you may not want to use the exact same render settings and the same encoding settings. That's why the add-on ships with a tool to automatically change the render settings for you and then fire up the render as well if you want it. It does a few things like these, but let me show you how it works. So first, you can access it by searching for render videos for the web. This is this tool, and we're going to look at the input settings to talk about what it can do for you. I'll press Ctrl Alt U to access the preferences and search for the same operator, render video for the web. In the built-in key maps, you have a shortcut for it. It's Alt F12, as F12 is for render animation. Maybe it's Shift F12. And um, this is your alternate render, if you want. You can find uh, three, uh, three settings here. You have file name, preset, and automatically render. The file name is because the tool will automatically name the exported file for you. You have three options. You can use the folder's name. This is the folder that's the parent of the blend file, okay? So if you like that, for example, have a folder on your computer, let me show you. Mine is named chapter1.charactercontroller. I don't want to use this. Um, but if you name this parent folder something else, it can work for you. Then you have the option to use the blend file, in my case, character controller tutorials. Um, I've used this quite a few times. It's great if you are just doing one video in one blend file. And if you want to create multiple videos in one Blender project, you can use the current scene name. If you use this option, when you render the scene, it's going to use the scene name at the top, in this case, 03 input direction. I do this when I'm creating multiple tutorials that are related to one another in a series. It's very convenient. So you don't have to bother about changing the render settings for every scene. It's going to do this for you automatically. Another note, the advantage of doing this is that uh, when you want to switch scene, and by numbering the names, you can just type the number to filter down to the scene you want to open. That's why I also use this naming scheme. And I can copy paste uh, images that are shared between the different videos with the cut and copy operator, as I showed you. Let's go back to the preferences. Then we have the preset. For now, there are only two. YouTube and Twitter. The Twitter one is for Facebook and Twitter. It's going to render at 720p uh, and with just encoding settings, simple MP4, um, H.264, so what Twitter and Facebook ex expect. And YouTube is similar. It's just a bit higher quality and it renders at full HD um, and the frame rate, however, should be untouched that is to say, it's going to use the frame rate of your project. The last thing is auto render. If it's on, when you call the operator, it's going to fire the render. So let me show you with this video example. First, I will open the properties, the render properties instead of the graph editor. So we can see two things, the render dimensions here and also the uh, output but an encoding now because it's not been set yet to the right codec we can't see the encoding settings let's open them here and i hope we can see both the important part in there is uh, i want to show you that if i set the resolution to anything when i call the operator it's going to update the values here, including the encoding down there. Uh, and the frame rate, however, will stay untouched. So I can set it to anything I'd like. Normally, it's using uh, NTSC film in most cases. That's what I use. 
and I can press Alt F12 and the render launches automatically. But if we look up there, the render resolution has been changed by the operator. And if you go down, you can see that it's using the H264 codec uh, rendering to MP4 with medium encoding speed and it's perceptually lossless for the uh, CRF constant rate factor. But you could also set it to use constant bitrate and the settings are set for you here as well. If I go now to my render folder, it's rendering next to the blend file. And you can see it's rendering a file called o3.inputdirection.mp4. That's exactly the name of my scene. So you can use this to render your scenes a bit faster. And I want to address one thing. Um, Blender's sequencer is known to be slow because it only uses one CPU core. It's not exactly that it's slow, it's that it's not using all the power that's available on your computer. Now, the thing is, it's not as bad as it seems because when you are rendering a strip, because it only uses one CPU core, you can launch your project a second time and you can keep editing on the second project, which, which will use a different CPU core. So you can edit the next video. Just be sure to save, obviously. But you can see I can smoothly edit my second version of the project. No problem while it's rendering in the background. To me, this is an advantage. Uh, depending on the type of video you'll make, this may not be as pleasant. But if you're using a different tool one of the issues is even if it's rendering faster uh, it makes your computer unusable i've worked with different video editing programs in the past and that was one of the issues sometimes i couldn't use my computer for 30 minutes because it would completely use the processor as well as the gpu